I had the opportunity to pick up, not just a couple, but a whole bunch of O-Gage, Lionel, and some Marks operating accessories. I bought the whole lot out, hauled it home. Let's go through it, see what works, see if I paid a good price for it, do a little comparison, see if we agree on the condition of these things. Check these things out. Let's take a look at all the stuff. I got them all lined up here in the little cabin. We'll get each one individually running, but don't worry, I'm not going to show it on screen because that'd take forever. There's about 16, 17 of them. Clean them up and let's price them out, see how good we did. Let's get into it. Here's our collection of Lionel action accessories that I scored right here. Oh my goodness. I, I never had any of these as a kid at all. And I found them all it, at a second hand store. This fella here, that's a Marks. That one there's a Lionel pre-war. Yep, oh, and this one here's a Marks. Let's take these things and see how many of them are gonna work, do what they need. How much is it gonna cost to fix them up, to get them where they're supposed to be? And did I lose money or did I come out okay on them? Yeah, let's, let's figure it out. Let's take a look at this 460 piggyback transportation set. It seems to mostly be here. Yeah, it's big, big. Got these Lionel trains car and they are dirty. This whole thing, absolutely filthy. These come off. I guess you can put stuff in there. Tic Tacs, chiclets, lifesavers. I think I'm gonna go wash this. I'm just gonna wash this up real quick so it shows up better. After some cleaning it up, we really, let's see, we got the shine. Oh, I'll get the light in there, sure. The deck is shiny clean now. I waxed it. I washed it and I waxed it with the turtle wax. I lubed up the controls in here. So this goes up and down like it's supposed to. And it is, it is everything that a feller could desire. Yes? Ah, look at that. But this one, very happy with. Everything functions. I, oh, I got a little guy. I can order a new little guy to sit up there, so he's going to be coming in for it. Let's take a gander at this Gerard Whistling Station. Marx isn't documented as well as Lionel is, so I'm not sure when this came out. It's got a little bit of rust on it here. We're going to give it a wax job. Got a couple, couple pins over here for the whistling. So let's hook up some AC to it just to see what it does. Do I expect it to do anything? <laughs> no. Uh, nothing. Uh, more nothing. Bust into it real quick. See what it might be. She just needed a little bit of, little bit of oil right down here. Yeah. We'll clean her up. Wax it. This one came out nice. A little quieter now. Huh? Another keeper. This one here is in really, really nice shape. I mean, it's got... It's got some just some natural shine on its own. We're hoping to see the little feller come out the door and the gate come down. I'm not going to hook this in because we don't need to. We're just using the transformer. AC. Here we go. Huh. Oh, God. Did that go fast? Jeez. Okay. Got ourselves another winner there. And this one's so dang. I mean, it's so clean. I don't even need to clean it. That's how clean it is. Maybe we'll just get a wet cloth around it, but oh man, made out good on this one. Yeah, we got one of them there, 394 rotary beacons right here. Now the price is right on this one, but it's missing the it's missing the, the bulb. It's got a special bulb up here, and then it's got the thing around there. I wonder if the juices even work. Let's hook onto the bottom here. I wonder if the bulb lights, I mean that bulb lights up. Oh, hey, well that's a bonus. These here you can still get the bulb with the dimple in it. And then the spinny thing on the top that moves by air. Maybe we'll take a little toothbrush and some Dawn dish soap after it and just clean it up a little bit. Got a little, little funk on it. Our next little entry today is gonna be the old 3656 remote controlled operating cattle card and platform. Put the juices to it. Oh, we get the doors open up. And the, the car is definitely doing the vibrating. The platform. Doing something. I don't got any cows for it, of course, because that'd just be silly. This stuff here, we can order those in. It's dirty. 
And I bet you whatever vibrates under here, we get to it from th this screw here and just see what's see what's going on. I just I just would have expected more out of it. Well, after some cleaning and a little bit of lubrication, we got things doing what they're supposed to do. This this would close and then open up the doors right here. The flaps show up, and then when you really put the put the wick to her, the vibrations are supposed to make things scoot along, and it's supposed to scoot on in here. Interesting enough, for this car, these are the these are the doors that face you know this way. They get opened up by this little fella popping up. Then back over here, when you open up the door, it lets the cows come down and around, and then I guess you can you can make them go down the chute, I, I guess, I don't know. And if it's closed, then you can see it's gonna be sitting right here. This is closed. And the cows will just go in and then they'll just stop. So the door opens and that's what makes the Makes all the magic happen for the loading and the unloading portion of the car. I like the fact that they use normal track and then they got the, the things here to ride up on these buttons to power this car to make it do what it's supposed to do. Instead of having to have a special, special track, it just, it, it's included with the accessory. That's really nice of them. Gotta tell you, I've been working on this part right here for a really long time to get the ramps and the doors to open and close. Lots of little adjustments. But here's something I wonder about. There's a substantial gap right there. If I had the cows, I'd be able to figure it out. But I mean, that's almost like half an inch. Is it like, is this one of those things that just never ever really worked right at all, ever? I don't know. Is there too much gap right here? Ugh. Now I need to get cows. Here's the old number 71 lamp post. It's nice that it's got the box. And the box is almost really nice because it's got the one flap over here. And then they wrote on this flap. And then this flap is missing. So that takes this box and reduces its price. This this wire is brittle. Let's just see if it'll even work. Do we do any good on this one? That's just a ground right there. Hook her up, crank the, oh my. Bonus, bonus material right there. That, that actually looks nice. Sure. I I could go for 50 more of these. <laughs> yeah. This here is the platform to the number 3472 remote control operating milk car and platform. <laughs> but I don't have the track. I don't have the car. I don't have the, the to make it do its thing. I don't have the milk jugs. So I think we lost we lost out on this one. So this next one we're going to do here is the old Line L number 132, the automatic stop station. And I read these destructions right here in this schematic, because I can, and I wired it up. So basically what we've got is we've got an, an isolated block in the center. There's an insulated pin right here, and there's an insulated pin right here. So this is on a separate block being controlled by this. This block up here and this block down here is the same block being powered 100% from the throttle of the thing. And what this is going to do is it's going to go in to the block. It's going to stop for a certain amount of time. And then afterwards, it's going to motor on out. So check it out. Sure. Had to catch it so it didn't run away from me. It's also the lights working it. Yeah, yeah. This one really came out nice. Mm -hmm -hmm -hmm. Except for the, you know, nightmare wiring of it. Golly. The next accessory we're looking at here is going to be the number 356 operating freight station. Part of the collection I got there, just a little bit dirty. Got it all wired up over here. Even put the momentary button in because I did find the destructions for it online. This is an interesting piece. I got this roof loose. You hit the button and the vibrations start to vibrate. And that little fella here goes around the track just from the vibrations. It doesn't do a very good job on the corners. It takes it a while to get around. And I think it's because these little feet down here, I think they might be a little worn. 
I got one original car. So if he gets around over there, it goes a lot faster. And here's a trip that, that if the other car, the first car is sitting right here waiting. See, the one car is full, one car is empty. It's the way it works. So you see this guy here, he won't be able to move. The other car comes in, trips this lever up, which allows this other car to move, which would give it the illusion that a full car is going in. And then as soon as he goes in, trips the lever, an empty car comes out. Yeah, that's what this one's all about. Definitely working. Need two carts. I think two new carts for sure. Interesting. Yep. Here's the old pre-war number 455 operating oil Derek. It's a little dirty, but physically it seems to be working. I did have to fix this a little bit. Weirdly enough, the ground lug. The ground lug right here wasn't ground and good enough. We had to get in there and twist it and to get this to work. Put another light bulb in it, but yeah, it's working. So now it's it's worth cleaning up because it's it's dirty. Oh, it's <laughs> yeah, but functional. That makes me happy. Let's take a look at this 395. This floodlight tower connections down under here. Yeah. One more. Okay. Twist the wick. Oh, yeah. Oh, sure, all four of them are going. That's a pretty good deal. Not super bright. Yeah, that one was a nice one. This one's worth cleaning up. Take the old scrub brush tour and shine her up some. Here is the old 138 Lionel water tank. Yeah. Doesn't look too shabby. Did a little, little working on it. Got that going? Yeah. Clean this up. This is going to be a nice little nice little keeper here. Sure. Number 76. Warning bell and shack. Little kicker in there. Does it make any noises? They wanted kind of a lot for this. And I'm just hoping that it does something. Yeah. Did you hear it go home? And that was about it. Probably needs a little lubrication in there, I bet you. Everything likes just a little bit of something, something. He wants to do something. Well, that took forever. Didn't want to have to take it apart. But that gives us a good chance to wax this up. Wash it up real good and wax this thing up. Because this one here, she's a gem. Well, now that we've got them all cleaned up, we're, we're, they're working. I, you know, I did a lot of fixing. Did a lot of it off camera. Now I know what I've got. I've got stuff that, that's doing its job. It's all shiny. We're going to show it to you, but let's check prices. The price I paid for it at the secondhand store, the price it's really worth, and what kind of condition is it in. I got this little sheet right here, the Train Collectors Association Grading Standards, the C10 through C1. You know, looking at these things, I'll throw it up on the screen. The C10 Mint, I, I don't even know why that exists because it obviously never even left the factory. It just sat there in a box in the back room and never went anywhere. Because how can you be anything more than factory new? Is it, is it just me? Most of the stuff I get is like a C1 to a C3 for the most part. Or I get something that's really dirty and I can polish it up and get it running again. I like to keep it around a, a C6, if I could. Very, you know, very good. Now this book here is where I've got the prices out of. And I just looked it up and I see that this was printed in 2004 or after that. That's the date on the copyright on the front of it. The prices must have been a lot different back then than they are now because these prices are really high compared to what stuff sells for on the eBay. We're going to use these as a reference. We're going to use the price I paid for it at the secondhand store or vintage store because you know those usually are a little bit higher what, what you would expect because of vintage. And we're going to see what the going rate is on the, on the eBay and see if I got a really good deal buying local keeping local businesses going, or I've been better off buying it off of eBay and having it all shipped in. Let's get on it and see what we've got. Starting with the number 460 piggyback transportation set by Lionel. This was available from 1955 through 1957, and this is a Type 1. Uh, this guy, he's missing the little blue operator on it. It's got the correct flat car, it's got the correct, correct vans. The price tag on this was 60 bucks. It's going to cost me $6.95 to get a new operator for it. So with shipping and everything like that, we're into it for $66.95. 
If it was a very good condition, according to the, the Lionel book, it'd be worth a hundred bucks. Can you believe it? It's got a rarity of four, which means it's uh, not so much, but kind of. Now I went to eBay. Every one of these things is going to be the exact same. I typed in buy it now and I had it listed from cheapest to the most expensive. And the very first one that had the exact same stuff available. Okay. So it's like we're comparing apples and apples. Very first one I found on the eBay. $53 and 78 cents. Man, I lost a little bit on that one. Going to the Marks, the 2959 Gerard Whistling Station. Now these are a little rare. It had a $10 price tag on it. When I bought it down at the vintage store, they say if they're in good condition, they're worth 25 bucks. If they're excellent, it's worth $40. Well on eBay, yep, I could have bought one today, had it shipped in for $34 and 50 cents. So I'm ahead now, I'm up. Did a good job buying it local. Yeah. Going into the marks, the crossing shanty with a man. It's hard, just hard to look this up because nobody knows what it is. It's either a number 1420 or a 1439. This was available in 1957. This one's still got the little arm on it, which is pretty rare. Usually they're all broken off. So it's hard to find a good comparable one. I got this one for 20 bucks here locally. If it's in good condition, it's worth 25. If it's an excellent, it's worth 45. Yeah, we did all right. Used on the eBay, the one of comparable value that I could find, 39.95 on my doorstep. We're up again. So far I'm ahead by buying local. Going into this 394 Rotary Beacon. Now you notice that it's missing a lot of stuff. This one was available from 1949 to 1953. And this is a Type 3 from the 1950 through 53 production years because of its aluminum construction. It's left unpainted. That's just the color that it is. Yeah, we're missing the, the whirly bird on the top and we're missing the light bulb that holds up the whirly bird to make the whirly bird spin. I got it for five bucks. I can get the bulb and the beacon for it for $12.95 landed on my door. So that means I'm into it for $17.95. Now it says if these things were in really good condition, very good, it'd be worth 20 bucks. If they're excellent, it'd be $30. On the eBay, I could have got one for $16.80. So now we're down, we're down a buck. So far, doing all right though. Now, before anybody sits there and wonders, hey, why are you quoting buy it now prices instead of quoting sold for prices? Well, if I wanted to buy one today, like I did all this stuff, I would have to buy a buy it now price. If it's already been sold, I can't buy it. This is, that's why I'm using the buy it now cheapest. I could find buy it now price that there is. I was surprised at the numbers and the variations in the numbers. I'm sharing them with you. God, I hope this isn't, hope this isn't dragging on, you know. Might be, I don't know. Going to the 3656 remote cattle operating station, cattle car and platform. These were available from 1949 to 1952. I believe this is a variation one because of the armor that's on the door of the box car. When these are in very good condition, they're worth 35 and they're in excellent condition, they're worth 50. I picked it up at the second hand store for $45 and I gotta buy a set of cows for it. So I could buy some cows for $14.95, so I'm into this thing for just a little bit, little tiny bit less than $60, which is more than it's even worth. You can buy one of comparable condition on the eBay on my doorstep for $51.29. Yeah, yeah. So we're a little down on that one. That remote control operating milk platform, ah, that, that $10 for that dock. And to get, I can get a whole car with milk cans and the track for 30 bucks. So that means I'm into the thing for $39.95. And if it's in excellent condition, it's only worth 35 bucks. So I'm already upside down in the dang thing anyway. Found one on eBay, complete $32. So I should have should have just waited on that one and bought it off the bay. This illuminated station with the automatic train control, I'm surprised that it even worked. Now I paid $22.50 for it. The collector's book says that didn't, it's worth anywhere between $75 and $110. Can you believe it? I can't. Holy jeez. No repair needed to it. Just had to clean it up. eBay, cheapest one I found, $27.90. So came out all right on that one. Yeah, yeah. Now that operating freight station, oof, is that noisy? It is a noisy bugger. Number 356, available from 1952 till 1957. This is a type one due to the fact that it has one of the baggage carts that's got a load on it. 
after that they after uh, they they quit doing that because the cars didn't run around at the same time and it jammed up all the time I paid 45 for it it needs to have a replacement cart so i'm going to be into it for 57 dollars and 75 cents now these things range from 150 to 185 dollars on the on the book i know and you can buy one on ebay for 31 dollars and 67 cents and rarity of seven that means that they're not that they're not that common i'm surprised that the people on the ebay are selling them for so cheap <laughs> i mean honest doesn't yeah, doesn't make sense now this number 455 operating oil derrick this was available from 1950 through 1954 this is a type one because it's got the green tower and the red platform now this one's missing the aluminum drums and it's missing one of the little aluminum signs that's supposed to be up on the derrick the two common things that it's always missing the sonico sign on the derrick and the drums I got this for 50 bucks and it works. It absolutely, after I fixed it, it works. They're worth 175 to 225. Yeah, it's not, not that uncommon. If you could sell it for what the book says it's worth, I'd, I'd be sitting on a gold mine. eBay's got them, $65.90. So their guys are just giving them away out there. Now this number 395 floodlight tower these were available from 1949 to 56, and this is what's called a Type 4 because it, it's got the red, it's red. It's got the red all of it. It's painted red. Steel painted red. I paid 28 bucks for it. There ain't nothing wrong with it. All the bulbs worked and everything. Very good. 30 bucks. They're, they're worth they're worth 30 to 50 dollars if they're in good shape. But here's an oddball for you. Since it's red in color, I couldn't find any for sale on eBay right now. I had to go to the sold items and I had to scratch through three three four scroll pages to find a red one that sold it sold for almost 65 bucks so there there's a little rarity right there unbelievable sold for more than the book says it's worth strange just strange this number 138 water tank these were available from 1953 through 57 this is a type 2 because it has the unpainted orange roof on it they're worth 100 to 150 dollars they have a rarity of a five so they're kind of uh, you know paid 68 bucks for it i had to do a little work to it it's missing one of the one of the rods that puts the ground to the upstairs thing but on ebay the, the only one i could find comparable that didn't have a bunch of broken parts and the snout broken off of it and everything else almost 73 bucks so we're up right there yeah right on now this little pre-war lionel feller this number 76 these were available from 1939 to 1942. They have a price range, according to the book, between $95 and $143. I picked this up for $58. And on the eBay, I had to scratch around a little bit, found one that's comparable, $64.90. So we are so far doing really, really pretty good. I've been enjoying camera problems like nobody's business. And learning curves on different cameras drive you insane so we crunched all the numbers on this stuff here this is what i've been looking to do all for four days now i'm into this stuff for 517 dollars with all the repair parts needed landed on my doorstep 517 this stuff all fixed up so we got like a c6 maybe a real wobbly c7 you know now if i would have bought it all from the ebay i'd have been into it for 584 dollars and of course it would have all been shipped, you know, landed on my doorstep, but I don't know if it needed any parts or not. So, so far we are definitely ahead. Then to sweeten up the pot a little bit more, I told the owner at the secondhand store, hey, I'll buy all this stuff for your asking price on it if you'll throw in these, these cars right here. And sure enough, yeah, he's, it, yep, sounds like a deal. Threw those in, threw a couple other little tiny things in. Now these cars, of course, they're not, they're not big dollar cars. The sold for prices on the eBay worth 100 and 120 bucks. Something to work on right there. No, you know, nobody got rich. But I did find out that, that the guy at the secondhand store that I love going to all the time, uh, he's treating me good. Hopefully you guys have some guys at the secondhand stores that are treating you good. They're not sc scalping you. Learned a lot here from this pricing. I don't know what kind of numbers this is using, but it ain't, ain't nowhere near close to what things are actually selling for nowadays. See, it's almost like the bottom has dropped out. People say... Playing with model trains is expensive. Not really. It's pretty cheap if you want to play with the old, the old stuff. Yeah. Shout out to all the 33 percenters that are out there. Thanks for sticking around to the end. I'm Ron with Classic Model Trains. Hopefully you've learned some stuff today. 
pricing, stuff, what things look like, how cheap you can get them for. So I've had a lot of fun filming this. Hope you've enjoyed watching it. Bye-bye.